So I'm watching... The Aaron Ra has now put out a new video where he talks about the debate he was in with Inspiring Philosophy. And I'm watching this video, it's kind of blowing my mind. Because he is presenting himself as Mr. Evidence. I am Mr. Evidence-based conclusions. I base my beliefs and reality on things that have been tested and, are, and, are, and the evidence bears out and nothing else. And in it, he is conflating two separate, separate ideas and intermingling them as he sees fit to sow confusion, saying, I'm Mr. Evidence, and in my 20 years of doing this, of being, the, of being one of the big atheists, nobody has ever shown me conclusive evidence for the existence of God. Great, okay, so you're Mr. Evidence, and nobody has shown you any conclusive evidence for the existence of God, but it wasn't the debate. It wasn't the debate, so great, stay an atheist. But the same fastidiousness about drawing only evidence-based conclusions cannot be disregarded when it comes to the debate in question and what you are actually trying to what you are actually trying to to debate and what you are actually trying to explore. And that was: Is Christianity dangerous? It wasn't. Does God exist? So you can only you only base your evidence your your conclusions are all solely evidence-based when it comes to the one conclusion about whether God exists or not. Great. Stay an atheist. But how are you disregarding all the evidence presented to you about the question of the pro-social benefits of Christianity? Because when it comes to that question alone, which is what the debate was about, there was tons of evidence presented and you didn't deal with any of it. Tons of evidence presented. And if, you're only based your, if, you, if it's only evidence-based conclusions, then you need to yield. You need to yield. And you need to be, yield to the evidence-based conclusion and the pretty much almost conclusively proved fact that Christianity is pro-social, is a net positive. And if God doesn't exist, stay an atheist. That's fine. But if you're talking about evidence-based conclusions, how are you disregarding all the evidence about the pro-social benefits of Christianity? Honestly, how are you doing it? Because you did. See, one of the things Aaron Rod does, he does what every anti-theist does. Sarah Michelle did the exact same thing. The Bible is a destructive book. Why? Well, here are these three scriptures. For example, Exodus 21, which condones slavery. These three scriptures. Okay, fine. Those three scriptures are negative or potentially negative or at least controversial. Now, what about these hundred scriptures over here? What about the book of Matthew? Chapter 5, for example. Where Jesus is instructing you to be merciful and saying, Blessed are they who mourn, for they shall be comforted. What about those scriptures? Seems to me there are a lot more of the scriptures that are conclusively, which everybody would agree, pro-social, benevolent, instructing the Christians to do things that are in the best interest of the community at large. Do those scriptures not exist? Do we disregard evidence that undermines our presupposition because that seems to be what's actually going on. You can't come to the presupposition that Christianity is destructive or dangerous and then disregard every piece of evidence that shows you that is actually pro-social and positive overall. Can you? I don't understand how you do that. And then you turn around and say, I'm Mr. Evidence. I base all of my conclusions only on the evidence. Well, great. When it comes to the pro-social benefits of Christianity, you're disregarding all the evidence. All of it. The only evidence you seem to see is the one that backs up your, your already <laughs> the conclusion you're trying to prove. This is for the Christians, too. This is why we don't slam dunk these. Because they conflate the two questions and so confusion. If you are debating... I'm not saying Michael did this because he didn't necessarily, but it's easy to fall into the trap. If you are having a debate on is Christianity dangerous or is Christianity positive, benevolent, and pro-social, that is slam dunk evidence-based conclusion. And if you don't believe me, go watch the debate with Michael versus Matt Dillahunty on the same subject because he was a little better there and it was a lot clearer. But he gave a really consistent evidence-based, here's what the data suggests. Here's what the data suggests. And in that particular debate, Matt Dillahunty had enough, either he didn't really feel like debating or had enough intellectual integrity to ultimately yield the point. I saw him doing with Jordan Peterson too. Just because something is, is useful doesn't make it true. That's what he ultimately started saying. Just because something is potentially positive doesn't mean it's true. There wasn't a debate.
Aaron Ra conflated the two questions. You weren't debating whether God exists. And all of the evidence, nobody's ever shown you convincing evidence that God exists in your 20 years of being atheist. I get that. That's probably why you're still an atheist. So stay an atheist. But you were shown a lot of, a lot of convincing evidence on the pro-social benefits of Christianity. And you were shown it that night in the debate. And if you've actually been honestly investigating for 20 years the way you say you have, I don't see how you've disregarded that evidence. Because it's pretty conclusive and it's pretty obvious. If we just take the Bible itself, the, one of the go-tos of the anti-theist, the Bible's a destructive book because it has, you know, these five homophobic scriptures. But they seem to disregard the 120 positive scriptures that they themselves will admit, yeah, that's positive. You can't, t you can't argue out of both sides of your mouth. If you are Mr. and Mrs. Evidence-Based Conclusions, then you need to yield to the obvious evidence-based conclusion that Christianity is a pro-social religion for the most part, at least mostly benevolent and mostly positive, and it teaches its congregations for the most part. It teaches them what? To be more humble, to be more lovable, to be more compassionate and merciful, to be tried to be Christ-like. This is what Christianity actually teaches in the Bible, the dread book of genocide and, and homophobia. Then you, tell, you turn around and you tell me I'm cherry-picking the scriptures. No, I'm not. There are a lot more scriptures. A lot more scriptures. There are 150 scriptures on love, for example. This is my command that you love one another. Walk in love. God is love. 150 scriptures telling you to be a more loving human being. There are three homophobic scriptures, maybe five, ten, if you're feeling, you know, generous. How are the 150 scriptures that tell you to be a more loving human being somehow negated? They don't count as much as the negative ones? If you're doing a fair analysis and you're basing it only on the evidence, the evidence clearly suggests and you have to conclude based on the evidence that the Bible is a pro-social book that teaches its, teaches its readers to be more humble and Christ-like and to be a more loving, merciful, and compassionate human being. That's a fairly obvious evidence-based conclusion. Whether you agree that God is God or not, irrelevant. The book really obviously teaches people to behave better. Really obviously so. And if you only base your beliefs on evidence, you have to yield to that evidence-based conclusion because that's clearly and obviously true. You don't believe me? Go, go tally up the scriptures. Tally them up. Because that's what the evidence would do. That's what a purely rational understanding would do. Go, there's these five scriptures that teach something that's negative or controversial, and there's these 150 that teach pro-social and positive things. And they just count. So the evidence tells you clearly that the Bible is a book that teaches benevolence. Benevolence, that's what the evidence would suggest. Conclusively, by the way. So how does this get confused? Because the anti-theist and, and the atheist confuse the issue. They use the idea of evidence when it suits, you know, no one's ever given me conclusive evidence that God exists. Great. I, probably that's true or you wouldn't be an atheist. I hope. I hope. <laughs> I hope you wouldn't just go, dead. maybe you're doing it there too. Because there's tons of conclusive evidence, really obvious conclusive evidence, that Christianity is a pro-social religion. Duh. <laughs> you know, you point to things that are actually out of character of Christianity. You point to the same things. The Crusades. We've got the Crusades. We've got the, you know, the Spanish Inquisition. We've got the persecution of a couple of scientists here and there. Okay, those are those keep in mind that those things are taken out of an entire structure that was known as Christendom, which means that was an entire civilization with a 1200 year history at least. And you're taking a few things and saying, see how bad Christianity is, and disregarding all of the good in the 1200 year civilization known as Christendom. That's a massive distortion of reality. That's a massive distortion of reality. Honestly, it is. It's just like the massive distortion of reality that almost everybody, even most atheists know Jesus is a good teacher, a teacher of good things. Even atheists will call you on that. 
That's not very Christ-like of you. They'll say that to Christians all the time on Twitter. Go look. Someone's saying it right now on Twitter as we speak. That's not very Christian of you. Look at this great Christian. What do they mean? They mean he's not being very, very merciful, compassionate, Christ-like. Duh and double duh. But that same person will go into debate that night and say, with a clear conscience, seemingly, Christianity teaches only negative things. Oh, yeah, then why were you on Twitter this morning calling someone out for not being Christian? What did you mean then? He wasn't being homophobic? He wasn't being anti-science? No, you meant you're not being merciful, you're not being compassionate, you're not being Christ-like. You're not being benevolent, as your religion instructs. That's the only part of the sentence you left out. You're not being truly benevolent, as your religion instructs you to be. Because that's what the religion instructs you to do, quite clearly, quite obviously. Let them see your good deeds so they will praise your Father in heaven. You're supposed to know I'm a Christian because of my benevolence. Because I'm nothing but good. I come up, I show up at work, and I'm like, hey, can I help you with that? Here, you want, here's my coat. Take it. If somebody asks you for your coat, give it to them. That type of person. The true Christian, and I'm not allowed to say true Christian, but the true Scotsman, the true Christian, is the guy at work who you know if your car breaks down, you'll call him up. Why? Because he'll help you out. He'll help you out. Why? Because the Bible is instructing him how to live. Not, you know, oh God, it's six, five in the morning. What is it you're calling me for? Not the world. The Bible is instructing him how to live. And the Bible is telling him, if somebody asks you for your coat, give it to him. Somebody strikes you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. Now, now we gotta, someone's going to start a dust up on that. That's not good advice. It's not good advice in all situations. Blah, blah, blah. Let me pretend I don't understand that either. You can't pretend like you don't understand pure benevolence. You don't believe me. Start with Matthew chapter 5. Say this time and time again. Start with Matthew chapter 5 to chapter 8. Two controversial passages only in there. That's it. The rest of the stuff you're going to almost assent automatically to. And go, yeah, that's probably good, that's good, that's good. Those are the actual teachings of Christianity. That's the teachings of Jesus Christ. His first public utterance as far as we know. His first public ministry. And even in the dread Old Testament... You've got scriptures, the Lord has anointed me to heal the brokenhearted. <laughs> to do good things. Tons of scriptures that preach benevolence, that preach kindness, that preach compassion towards your fellow man. You cannot disregard the evidence of these actual scriptures because they don't suit your, you know, agenda. Let's be honest. They don't. So, anyways, just some thoughts on the matter. Amen. Ah,